Uh, before making this response to your response, um, I did look at some of your other videos, and uh, they're all really nicely produced, um, uh, almost elegant. Um, there's a couple of things. Uh, you know, I, I think, I mean, there's this line, you know, between science and philosophy. And, and I guess I was sort of, in part of what I was commenting on before, I was trying to get to the, the, the science of um, our origins, you know, our, our, the history of life, um, the dynamics of life, you know, wh what makes it possible and what the probabilities of it are. Um, I, I guess I would still contend that if, you know, we had a, <coughs> there's a, in our history, a single cell that is a common ancestor to all known life on earth that um, that life was probably something like um, you know the microorganisms they find you know at the bottom of the ocean that are living off of um, chemistry uh, rather than the sun uh, you know there's all that that, that that you know the, the original cell wasn't something we would recognize in the current environment because it didn't wasn't created in that environment um, and evolved to adapt to the environment the, the earth became um, but regardless there was that that single um, cell that that single entity that reproducing entity and I, I think it was <coughs> I, I don't you know we can trace the cell to the before it was a cell before it was a self-contained reproducing um, life form um, but I don't know if it's necessary to go there just because I think the big event the 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 most the more dramatic event um, where chemistry now becomes biology actually right I mean theoretically the the two sciences have their transition at that cell, basically. Because at one point you basically just have chemistry that is reactive, and at the next stage you have this living thing that has a biology. Um, but anyway, let's not get caught up in words. Um, I, it's, it's not... Objectively, I'm just, you know, the, the, the question that I, I ponder is, is just more about what is the probability. I mean, I, you know, I sort of asked that before, but, you know, I know it's something we can't really narrow down. But that's sort of something that needs, we need to understand. I mean, we need to understand that reactive life, or reactive chemistry, isn't significant life. And there's a line, too, that now it becomes less science and more philosophy about where life becomes meaningful. I mean, is a fish much more than a rock, you know, a swimming rock? I mean, it has a consciousness. Um, we could speculate that it has a consciousness just because it has a central nervous system that reacts to pain, what appears to be, anyway, a reaction to pain as, a, as an input. Uh, and we can, uh, I suppose, assume that that's sort of what's a constituent of consciousness. Um, but let's say that everything on Earth wasn't, that there was no consciousness. It was just microorganisms consuming each other. Um, why the question's significant to me is that I would wonder what, you know, does that really have any meaning? I mean, what's the point of, I mean, life with no consciousness is nothing. And I would almost say, that that life without intelligence is nothing it's it's and it's not even that it's nothing it's not irrelevant like a rock because if it has consciousness then it has this vulnerability to pain and suffering and so it has a, a negative potential there's no real negative potential for rocks we don't have to worry about a rock holocaust um, the, it just it, you know the, the the vulnerability injected by this thing we know as suffering is, is a significant change in the, in the meaning of the universe.
first because um, and then the further you know take so let's that's the, the scientific question might be you know what how big a part it, or how, how much of a likelihood is life as, as a constituent of the dynamics of the universe I mean it obviously doesn't just it obviously doesn't produce it with regularity um, as far as we know a um, but how improbable is it I mean are we could it be possible I suppose it obviously is possible that we're it we're the most intelligent thing that matters ever produced um, that would give us a stunning you know a stunning responsibility to intelligence that we've achieved it and, and that you know the last thing we should do is squander it um, but anyway um, so let's you know the, the other part of it is this philosophical perspective and then, and then we we can sort of you know you see you do obviously you're a, a, the glass is half full kind of guy and I'm the glass is half empty kind of guy I look at the the mediocrity of existence <coughs> and um, you know find it lacking um, and you seem to think it's got redeeming value um, you know beyond um, that subjective impression um, so you know I mean even though you're suggesting we should take life personally um, yeah, personally, subjectively, I'm not too impressed. Objectively, I am impressed, just because I have a profound respect for this thing called intelligence. I mean, intelligence is, in my opinion, more important than the, the life crap. Um, it, you know, intelligence is the real gravy of, of humanity's existence, and, and the, real, the real meaning of it. I mean, it's not, you know, I guess I should say it's the real meat of the existence. It's, it's the whole meal, really. It's, a, it's, all, it's the whole, it's everything. And, and we've got to be so careful not to squander that. Well, anyway, so then there was part of where you're getting into this, you know, where, where we shouldn't be looking at our lives from the outside in. And to me, that's the that's the very nature of ob objective perspective of course we want to do that I mean if we're rats in a maze I think it'd be great if we step out of the maze and take a look at ourselves and try to figure out oh man uh, what is this you know <laughs> are we just chasing cheese and uh, okay the cheese is individual to each one of us and so this guy likes you know Ropefort and this guy likes cheddar and this guy likes you know Swiss and it's just um, we're all chasing different cheese, but it's all cheese chasing. The need is, you know, created inside of us, and, and we start just chasing the cheese, chasing the need, um, hungry for fulfillment. Um, but objectively, if we're going to look at that creature, that animal that's chasing the cheese, um, I don't know. Are we going to see purpose in that? I mean, purpose beyond some natural purpose? In that we're fulfilling nature's demand that uh, this is how this survival game is played uh, nature imposes the need and we spend um, our lifetime satisfying the need and uh, so that's enough um, that I ponder uh, I have conclusions but I don't you know it's 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 another part of this thing that's hard to get your brain around because you're, it goes back to the sense that we have, that I think, innately or even intellectually, that um, or a wanting, <laughs> you know, an intellectual wanting. That's probably a contradiction um, for there to be some purpose. Um, but if it is just chase, cheese chasing. We're just, you know, um, nature that doesn't have any, any sensibilities, any, any intelligence, and we're just fulfilling that natural purpose. We're just playing out the cause and effect chain that it initiated, and uh, you know that that's kind of depressing. Um, 
I'm not suggesting we all 